Are you worried about a potential slowdown in the economy and what impact that might have on your business? Are you looking for a few ways to be prepared in case this happens? If so, then this video is for you. Hi everyone, my name is Franco, your digital marketer. And in this video, I'm going to go over how you can prepare your business for a slowdown in the economy. Of course, over the last few months, we've seen high interest rates, student loan repayments have come back and COVID era funding has really dwindled, which means that everything is in order so that we can potentially see a slowdown in the economy. Of course, the Fed has already mentioned that they're going to start decreasing rates in a few months. And this usually is the result of the economy slowing down. So what can you as a business owner do so that you're prepared in case this happens? Because the worst thing you can do is nothing, just wait there and really expect something really good to happen. Of course, that might never happen. If sales start to come down and you're not prepared, you might lose your business to your competitors. So you need to be ready. So I'm gonna go over three specific things that you should look into improving within your business so that you are able to really withstand any potential downturn and really succeed while your other competitors, they might be having a hard time. So first and foremost, I want you to be efficient with your resources. So before we even think about spending additional money, we need to think about what we currently have and what we're currently spending money on that we can improve on so that we get a higher ROI. So for example, let's say you have a staff and your staff meets with potential customers. If before you were selling to 10% of the people walking through those doors, maybe you should aim for 20%, maybe 25%, 30%, etc. That way you're being more efficient without seeing extra costs within your system. Some of the ways you might be able to do this, you might meet with your team once a week, once a month, and go over objections, go over different scripts that you can follow so that you are being more efficient with your team. That way you are able to close more without having to spend more money. Number two is client retention. What can you do in order to keep your customers during a time in which maybe they don't have all that money to spend on your services and they might be looking for ways to cut down on some costs. Of course, one option is to decrease your prices, but you might not want to do that. Instead, you might want to see what additional value you can offer so that you can tell the customer, look, things are a little bit tough, but let me give you this additional service. That way you are able to continue benefiting from what I'm offering. And by that, I mean that, look, if the economy slows down, people might look for alternatives. They might look for another company that, that might be charging 20% less. But of course, if you're offering something that that company is not offering, then it makes them wonder why should they even leave you in the first place because they're getting something more from your service from other alternatives. Furthermore, you need to think about client retention as a way of getting additional business. And by that, I mean that if you invest in your client retention, you look for ways to keep your customers. Those existing customers generally bring in additional revenue through referrals. If someone has a good experience, they're going to tell their friends and family. So you have to think about how can I keep my existing clients happy? That way they stay with me and they refer other business because as you know getting new customers is usually the most expensive part of really growing a business now last but not least number three how can you keep growing your business during a time when maybe the economy is not doing too hot well one of those ways is to continue promoting your business to people who don't know who you are that might be a matter of running google ads facebook ads etc a lot of businesses sometimes they look for ways to cut down on some costs when things don't look too good if sales are down some businesses that i've seen they try to reduce reduce costs, including reducing their advertising budgets because they think that that is a good move. But what happens is that if you are seeing lower sales and you cut down your advertising budget, that's not going to help you get more sales. Spending more on your advertising efforts will bring you more sales if you do it correctly. So by that, I mean, look, if you're looking to keep growing your business, you need to spend more on advertising and marketing and you need to do it correctly. So you need to work with the people who are able to give you the right results. And above all, you need to do that so that you can continue to take some market share from your competitors. Because the truth is that if you're not promoting yourself out there and there's only such a finite amount of people looking for what you have to offer, the company that's promoting themselves online is going to get that business. So if you're waiting for someone to come in and buy from you, but there's no way that they can know about you, you're going to lose. Those potential customers are going to go to the person that show or the business that's showing up first on social media, etc. But like I said, you need to do it in a smart way. You can't just be spending spending money on social media, boosted posts and expect sales to come in. You need to have a good strategy to generate leads in order to be able to get people in your door. So to recap, we have three different ways of preparing your business in the case that there's a slowdown in the economy. The first one is to be very efficient with your resources. The second one is to retain your customers. And number three is to keep promoting your business with advertising and marketing. So I hope that you found this video helpful. Let me know your thoughts on these three points. Are there any more that you would add or maybe 
maybe some that you don't think belong on there. Let me know any other video topics that you would like for me to discuss and I'll make sure to note some of those for the next couple of videos. So thank you very much. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more. See you in the next one.